This is it. This is our last day on passage. This is why I'm absolutely convinced that Red Seas is going to start some international diplomatic warfare issue. Pancake party! We can see land! We have some dolphins! What a welcome! We have no motors right now, so um, with no engines anchoring, it's going to be interesting. Be fun! Last time on Red Seas, after setting off from Panama to cross the Pacific Ocean, we had a fantastic first week sailing in easy conditions to pass Galapagos and cross the equator. Some squalls caught up with us and we saw the biggest lightning storms we've ever seen at sea and had our first real panic when we were hit by a fishing boat thousands of miles from land. After sailing under cloud cover for more than a week, we almost lost all our power and had to do some emergency boat work to keep our batteries afloat. Then the real hard work began as we tore our spinnaker, broke our bowsprit, and then snapped a steering cable when we were still 800 nautical miles from landfall. But even after all of that, we're still here, we're still smiling, and we're setting our sights on the goal of our arrival into French Polynesia. Okay, so we all got very excited earlier today when we realized that we were closing in on FP. We probably have about 400 miles to go, so we're really chewing up the miles now, which is great. And part of that is we know that that means there's going to be more traffic because, you know, from Mexico, from Seattle, from California, and then all the way down, all the way to Patagonia and places like that down south, there's lots of people all heading towards the same place. So it's kind of like a funneling of boats. Um, however, we still haven't actually come across many boats in the last couple of weeks. I think it's been, yeah, it's probably been more than four, more than three weeks at least since we've seen a boat. And then today, I actually smelt it first, which is what's weird about it. But way out here on the horizon, you might not be able to pick it up. I'll try and get you a better shot. But there's this white speck over here. And it appears to be, it's either a cargo ship or a cruise ship. It's, it's a large ship anyway, because it's still, it's like 40 miles away. And yet we can see it, maybe 30 miles. And, uh, and it has this really chemically exhaust smell because they're technically downwind from us. So we're actually getting their exhaust fumes filling the cockpit and it's, it's nasty. We must be getting close to land now because we've got a bird flying around and around the boat. So only a couple of days left. That means it's time to sew our courtesy flags. So I've cut out the fabric here. Um, I'm actually making two flags. There's one courtesy flag for French Polynesia and there's one for the Marquesas. So I made one the other day for French Polynesia, which is crazy fiddly and um, I, <laughs> I've not done a good job at all. It is not a particularly good likeness, but I'm hoping that when it's 10 meters up in the sky and our mass, people won't be able to see the detail or a lack of. So that is that one. Um, it's almost done. I just need to add the kind of uh, bit at the side where it attaches and ties on. Thankfully, the one for the Marquesas is much simpler, but it has got some crazy detailing on this white triangle at the side, like a big face. So I haven't worked out how I'm going to do that yet, but um, yeah, we'll figure it out as we go along. She's at it again. I thought I was so nearly done and then I left the fiddly bit till last. So like, this is the uh, Marquesas flag. And I was like, oh yeah, great. Just three colors, not a problem. But I forgot there's like this tiny little diddly face over here. So um, I was gonna just draw it on or paint it or something, but I didn't think that would last. So I'm trying to like sew it into the fabric, but um, it's taking quite a while. Why aren't you stitching on both sides? Yeah, I'm not quite accurate enough to actually have lined up all the seams. So I'm going to have to do the whole thing twice, which I may not have time for because we're nearly there. This is why I'm absolutely convinced that Red Seas is going to start some international diplomatic warfare issue. Because every time you go to somewhere new, you sit there and think, oh, I'll just make the flag. You then make a different flag from their flag. It's close enough. As if it's you're... Like, you're not going to confuse this with a different country. 
It's not like, oh, where have you gone? Germany? <laughs> Some people have really proud of their flags. Imagine you did an American one, and you were like, oh, you know, 17 stars is enough. <laughs> I would totally do that. See, this is my worry. We're going to arrive and be like, wait, but why has the man only got one ear? He's supposed to have two and 17 rings. I think they should be grateful that I've put all of this effort into recognizing their country. Are you recognizing it by the film? Well, I have changed it a bit because I couldn't do the eyes quite as well because my thread is too thin. <laughs> They're not going to let us in. <laughs> this is it. This is our last day on passage. We've only got about 100 nautical miles to go, so we should make landfall tomorrow. So, yeah, last day at sea. We are just trying to soak everything up, make the most of this experience. We've got the fishing lines in. We're going to like eat all of the fresh food that we have left on board, which is really not that much. And oh my goodness, we are about to arrive on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. one of our only sailing maneuvers this entire crossing last night. So at about midnight, um, we jibed the Genoa. We were making a little bit too much south. Um, and in this swell, we can't really go dead downwind because the, uh, the Genoa just backfills and flaps and goes crazy. So we're having to stick at like 150 degrees off the wind, which means we have to jibe our way in. We were hoping to stop in at Fatu Hiva, which is described by a lot of people as the most beautiful anchorage in the world. But with all of the problems that we've had and the fact that we basically don't have any engines, we thought we had better go to somewhere slightly less remote so that we can actually clear in and do a bunch of repairs before we go exploring. So we are now heading to Hiva Oa. So we, we've jived just so that we can come north of Fatu Hiva and hopefully kind of curve around to our port of destination. We've got a couple of underwater pinnacles that we need to kind of dodge our way around as we make our way closer, but otherwise it should be a fairly straightforward final sale, and I cannot wait to arrive. Okay, 24 hours to go. Okay, so it turns out that we don't have any fresh food left other than potatoes, and I didn't want to eat potatoes because we've been eating potatoes with every meal. So, um, pancake party! Woohoo! Yes! This is what we've been waiting for. Why do we do this every day? We really should. Okay, there's 25 pancakes and all the sugar in the world. Let's do it. I am trying so hard not to judge here, but have you seen what Ian is putting on every single pancake? Trying hard to judge, are you? <laughs> I'm not really trying that hard at all. This is so disgusting. It's not disgusting, it's perfect. It's like layered up with Nutella, except it's not even Nutella. It's like Cheap Nutella. own brand Dutch something or other. Um, and then I made a cheesecake the other day, and so I opened a tin of condensed milk, but I didn't use it all. And, uh, and I like condensed milk. Ian is quite a fan of condensed milk. We used to get it in those like squeezy bottles back at home, and I would find one in the fridge, and Ian would just be like, ah. So the thing is, I don't drink. So if I need a pick me up to get me to go out for a party night, well, maybe than just a quick squirt of a condensed sugar. milk sugar just hit. It's sugar perfect. high, but yeah, it's, it's sugar on sugar on sugar. Shut up, it's lovely. Um, <laughs> so when we arrive tomorrow and we have to like sleep for three days, it's nothing to do with being at sea for six weeks, it's literally just a sugar crash. The sun has just come up and we can see land! You probably can't, it's over there. We can see land! land! <laughs> <laughs> it's also probably like really far away and faint and you can't see it, but I it promise there. there's like a big lump of rock there, a big mountains in the way on my horizon. We have what, 28 miles to go. Yeah, we are really close. As the sun came up this morning, I just thought, oh, I'd, I'd better like keep a bit more of a watch out because, you know, we're getting close. I know I'm wobbling all over the place. Uh, we're getting close and we might, you know, see some boats and stuff that we actually have to pay attention to now. And I was like, ah, <laughs> there's something in the way that I need to not hit. <laughs> <laughs> So the island we want to stop at is Hiva Oa, and then there's a smaller island below it, and we're kind of wiggling between them and then up into Hiva Oa. Yeah, so the bit of land that we can see is not even the bit that we're going for, but... Well, it is there though, it's behind the it, it is, yeah, it is kind of like... Actually, literally... Keeping underneath there. Big. Um, so yeah, wind completely died overnight for about seven knots, so we have been crawling along. It's like teasing, because it's going, you're so close, but now we're going to make you right. literally go by fingernail lips. So now the goal is to just try and get there before sunset, because we did say if we were going to get there in the dark, we would slow down and 
you know, go really slowly overnight to arrive the following morning, but we're like, I, we can't slow down no. anymore. I've decided to stuff it. We're going in at whatever time I think we can just make it work. It's supposed to be quite tight anchorage, so yeah. I suppose that means that when you get there, you, if you see lights, you're just going to hit something. Yay! We have no motors right now, so um, with no engines, anchoring is going to be gonna interesting. It's going to be fun! So it's really funny, as we've been getting closer to Kiva Oa here, from a distance, I was like, oh, it kind of looks a bit like the Caribbean. You know, this standalone islands, usually covered in trees, um, kind of just coming out of the sea. But actually, as we're getting closer, I'm realizing that this entire face, which is kind of the, well, I suppose it's the eastern face of the island, so it gets all the trade winds and all the storms will roll in this direction. And it's just barren. It's one big cliff face, pretty much. If you were coming here in like a tall ship back in the day doing a, a trades winds run, this must have been quite a weird sight. You'd be like, it's great we see land, but can we stop? I haven't even started to look at the charts to see how easy this is gonna be, because we don't have any engines. So we're gonna have to sail in, and then I might try and get one of the engines running briefly, although it is literally the last drops of oil that we have, because there's an oil leak in our starboard engine. So if I put the last drops in there, maybe we can run it just long enough to, to get the anchor down. And then we have some kind of creative solution involving the dinghy and some ropes to, uh, to try and back down and safely anchor at the end of this. 39 days, that's how long this has taken and most of that, almost all of that, we haven't needed an engine. So we are super close to the island now, but the wind is dying off and of course the swell is just gradually brushing us closer and closer to the rocks. Um, and the slower we go, the less forward motion that we make and the more sideways into an island we make. So we are just trying to lift the mainsail, which without an engine is quite difficult because we can't turn and hold our position into wind without any forward motion, our rudders don't work. Um, but we think that in light enough winds and if we drop the lazy jacks and if we swing the boom out to the side and tie it down, we might just be able to get enough of an angle that we can lift it. We'll give it a shot. It really wants to make us own it, doesn't it? It really does. What are we at? 10 miles, you said? 10 miles to go. 10 miles to go and the wind has just dropped below 10 knots. Like eight <laughs> knots. Of... We are inching forwards. So yeah, the boat suddenly dropped to less than two knots through the water, actually over ground. And I just realized that the wind and waves that was present or were present were pushing us towards the rocks. <laughs> and our port is 10 miles ahead of us, not to the side of us. So we were going to end up smashed up against cliffs and nowhere to go. So yeah, main sail up, play around with sail trim. We'll get there. We'll get there. Before dark, right? That's the goal. Sure. I'm not staying out here for 12 hours to wait for something. <laughs> it's not happening. Okay, so the wind is being stupid and the swell is being annoying and the, uh, the mainsail was just flapping and making some horrible bangy noises. So we dropped that and we're just going like two knots for the last kind of five miles. We are so close. But to lift those spirits, to get me out of my funk of almost six weeks of sea, we have some dolphins. What a welcome. They haven't got a nose, so they're quite well, they're small, but I think they're pilot will. <laughs> they don't have noses. They're Voldemort dolphins! Okay, the, uh, the dolphins or whales or whatever they are, super friendly cute animals, are slowly starting to fall behind us, and it's time that we made our turn anyway, because we can actually see the bay where we're trying to get to. It's hard to imagine that just six weeks ago, we were in Panama, getting ready for the biggest passage of our lives. 
and the day is finally here. We are off! This is like the best first day of a passage we could have hoped for. Yeah, we've already caught a fish. Well, I think it is safe to say that we have reached the doldrums. There's like three kilometers of water underneath us, and there is basically not a wave to be seen. Iron sails, I'm doing it, I'm calling it. But yeah, our freezer is now stocked. So we've got one massive tuna that gave us, I think, 16 portions. A huge mahi that gave us 12 portions. There is hope on the horizon. There's basically nothing between us and French Polynesia. I reckon we can probably now fly the Kraken. And then we're gonna have to add the little grumpy cam box around my face because I'm just here for a moment. <laughs> Looks like it's actually a speedboat with a guy heading right for us. The most I've seen so far is 46 knots. Now we're seeing the lightning flashes and hearing the thunder. It's pretty much right above us. I am absolutely terrified. This is not what I signed up for. We are moving into drastic measures. We've got to eat the ice cream. It's good. Okay, so this one's mine. Where's yours? Got the cracking up. Easy sailing now. Well, that looks better. Good as me. You can't tell it got dragged behind us for several miles. It's with great sadness that I have to announce. The Kraken is dead. It has literally just ripped like a straight line. What's another sea monster? I mean, Nessie? We totally needed this win. I literally fell asleep whilst I was making dinner. So we're hand steering because the autopilot is, I don't know, the autopilot's unhappy. We had a little bit of engine failure. Engine problems. Big problems. The hardest night of this entire crossing. Ian steered for three hours on the back step. The good news is we are counting down. You have to appreciate where you are. You're not going to be here in this exact spot. Maybe ever again. And that is pretty special. Oh my goodness. We just did it. We're actually here. I don't really know what to feel right now. I'm kind of elated that we've arrived and I'm just so relieved that everything is over and then I see this and I'm like oh but there's so much, so much to more see. to do now I want to get going and see it all and like excited puppies so like, let's yeah, go let's go totally. but actually we really really need to sleep we really do oh before that we have bubbles now I'm sure there's a sensible way of doing this sensible when have we ever been sensible do we remove the this up oh, I don't know we don't drink champagne we don't do this very <laughs> often I feel like it's loaded I know right don't break the boat now, we've just crossed 4,000 miles! 4,200 miles, I think you'll find. Woohoohoo! <laughs> hey! Whee! Uh-oh, ah! there it goes. Beautiful stuff! No, um, stop! This is how you know I don't know how to serve this stuff. How far does it go? Like... It bubbles! Stop! Stop! <laughs> I can't drink these two! Oh my goodness, how many? 4,000, check the track, what was it? It was 4,209 nautical miles, 922 hours. 922 hours, that's a lot of hours. 39 days. That is so much longer than we thought it was gonna be. That's like two weeks longer. One yeah, week, we thought weeks. we were gonna be like 28 days. Had we had a working boat, we probably should have. We always said right at the beginning that if Kantiki could do it, we could do we it, could do and it. I and think we've proven that. The cheesy thing, like what is it? That it how many we times? tried this last time. How many times round you go? Yeah, do you go around again and I'll feed you. <laughs> Good job, Indy. Good job, Indy. And I can now apologise for all of my whinging and moaning for the last 39 days. I'm so sorry. I've not whinged at all. I've never said a bad <laughs> word in my life, have you? You loved it. It was great. We crossed the equator. We're in our shellbacks. What else have we done? We've gone through multiple lightning storms. We've we passed have. pilot whales. We've passed dolphins. We've passed... Made friends with a pirate fisherman. Made friends with the fire fishman, that was fun. Almost oh took part in a pan pan, almost had our own pan pan. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a ridiculous ride, and I'm oh. gonna do down this half of that bottle and then pass out. Cheers. Cheers, guys. All right, having traveled over 4,000 nautical miles to get here, we figured why not turn around and do almost double that <laughs> the opposite direction. That's right, we have been asked to speak at the Southampton International Boat Show in the UK at the end of September, so we're heading home. Yeah, we're going to see everyone at Southampton. Uh, we then figured why not turn it into a bit of a tour. So we've been asked to speak at a couple of different yacht clubs and boat clubs around the UK. And then we thought we would round all that off on our way home. We are also going to swing into Annapolis and stop in at the boat show there as well. Our first time at Annapolis is going to be so much fun. We really look forward to meeting as many of you as you possibly can. So if you're going to be anywhere near Southampton, 
anywhere in the UK. Anywhere in the UK. It's a small place. And if you're making it to the Annapolis Boat Show, any of those places, we cannot wait to meet you in person. So please do let us know if you're going to be anywhere near any of those places. If you want to know where we're going to be, you can head to our website, red-seas.com forward slash tour. And that has got all the dates and locations of where we're going to be. So we can't wait to see you there.